So the next, se next section is about statistical studies and sampling methods. My goal for you today is to be able to identify the different types of statistical studies, um, how bias can happen and what bias is, and also the types of sampling methods you can use. Okay, to start with, we're going to start with the types of statistical studies. There are three types of statistical studies. There's a sample survey, um, an experiment, and an observational study. A sample survey is when you ask members of the sample the same survey questions and then you keep track of their answers. An experiment is when you apply treatment to a sample and then you measure the results of the experiment on the sample. Usually you have a control group as well so that you can see what happens to people who don't get the treatment and compare those results. An observational study is one where you're measuring or observing members of a sample, but you're not affecting the members as you watch them. So that's the difference between an observation and an experiment. The experiment, there is something happening to the people in your study. With an observational study, they shouldn't even notice that um, you're, they're being studied. So I want you to think about what type of study each of these are. Um, and we'll read the examples and then we'll think about what type of study it is. A grocery store wonders how many customers use reusable bags. An employee stands at the counter at checkout and counts how many people are using reusable bags. This is, um, we're not asking the customers anything. We're not changing their behavior. We are just observing. So this is an observational study. The customers might not even notice that they're being observed. In this one, a doctor conducts a clinical trial of new blood pressure medicine by prescribing it to half of their patients and measuring the effect it has on their blood pressure. This time, um, there is a sample group that's receiving treatment and another group that is not. And so this is an experimental study because there is a treatment involved. There is a change that we're um, prescribing to half of the group. All right, what type of study is this? A newspaper polls randomly selected candidates about which mayoral candidate they prefer. prefer. Um, this one is a sample survey because they are asking people about their opinions. Um, the next three questions are all about a gym. Uh, a gym asks its customers if they would prefer the gym to open earlier in the morning. Because they are talking to their customers and keeping track of the results, this is a sample survey. Um, a gym tries out a new weightlifting method to see if it will build muscle for their customers faster than their current method. This is something that where they're changing their customers. So this is an experiment. They're studying to see if this method will change the results. A gym counts the customers who use the gym for longer than 20 minutes. This is observational. The gym can count their customers without asking them any questions or without making any changes to their behavior. Um, I don't know if you guys have this, but uh, my insurance company would give me a, a lower rate if I went to the gym more than eight times. And I always felt like the gym might be paying attention to those times when I just dropped into the gym, swiped my card, and left. But um, All right, what type of study should you use if you would like to know how many hours a day lions sleep? Um, well, we can't ask the lions any questions, and we're not interested in changing the lion's behavior. So this is an observational study. We would want to take a look at the lions and count how many hours a day they are sleeping. Um, what type of study should you use here? If you want to know how many students at school would like the cafeteria to serve breakfast, you can't tell that by watching the students. You can't tell that by um, making a change and counting it. So this would be a, sur a sample survey question. We would want to ask them, do you want breakfast? And keep track of the results. Uh, what type of study should you use if you um, want to know what you should change to improve the growth of your houseplants? 
if you want to be very thorough about it, you would change one variable at a time and do that just for one group of houseplants and make an experiment so that you can see, is this change helping my houseplants or not? Okay, I want you to think for a minute about how confident you feel about the three different types of statistical studies. Can you tell the difference between an observation, an experiment, and a sample survey? Once you have done that, we'll move on to the next topic. The next topic is bias. A study has bias if it systematically produces the results that misrepresent a population. So your study is not giving you correct answers. Bias is actually a term that means lean. There's a lean to your study that doesn't give you the actual results. You're leaning on the scale. Bias can happen because of circumstances when two populations are polled or because of how the poll is conducted, like maybe on a beautiful day versus a rainy day or online. Oh, actually, I guess the beautiful day versus rainy day might be circumstances. How the poll is conducted would be online or through the phone or in person. Um, people might come to your door and ask you questions. Um, bias can also happen because of the way the questions are asked. So if you ask a question like, aren't you concerned about gun violence? That produces, violence, that produces bias because maybe people aren't concerned, but when you phrase it that way, they might start thinking that they are. All right. I want you to read these studies and determine whether you think they include bias or whether they seem unbiased and what way the bias is. So a psychologist is conducting surveys to study the happiness level of people who live in a neighborhood. She asks the same questions to two different samples. One sample is 100 people in a park on a Sunday afternoon, and 45% of those people said they were happy. The other group is 100 people on a subway train on a Monday morning, and 35% of them said they were happy. This is a biased uh, sample. These samples are not going to give you the same results because 100 people in a park on a beautiful sunny afternoon on a Sunday, which is a weekend, are going to be more happy than the 100 people who are on their way to work by subway on a Monday morning. Um, this is another sample. A school wants to know the average height of a student. So the school randomly chooses some students and measures their height. Some students are under five feet tall and some students are over six feet, five inches tall. While those results are different, we have some students who are very short and some people who are very tall. That is just a result of variation in the population. It is not a result of the way the survey was conducted because they randomly chose some students and measured their height. So sometimes Sometimes some students will be taller than others. This is not an example of bias. All right, a soft drink company calls 500 people at random and asks, isn't it true that our product is better than our rival's product? And 75% of the people responded, yes. This is an example of how the question can introduce bias. Um, the way they ask the question is not generic, like which do you prefer, our product or our rival's product? It is, isn't our product better? So that would be a biased sample. Um, even though they called their people randomly, that doesn't automatically um, say that you're not going to have bias. If you ask your questions in a slanted way, you will have bias. Okay, I want you to think about how you feel about bias. Do you feel like you understand what bias is? Do you feel like you are still shaky on this topic? There's a link at the top of our Schoology page where you can ask questions if you are still feeling shaky about bias. We're going to move on to the last topic of this lesson. The last topic is sampling methods. There are several different sampling methods you can use. You can use stratified sampling, cluster sampling, systematic sampling, or convenience sampling, or self-selected sampling. These last two, convenience and self-selected sampling, are considered pretty biased methods. So if you're using these two methods, you want to be very aware of the possibility of adding bias to your sample. 
So for stratified sampling, you divide your population into groups with similar characteristics. Like you might say, okay, this group of people all have the same kind of income. And then you choose a random sample from each group. So you say, okay, in this group of rich people, I'm going to choose some random people. And then I'll also choose some random people from this group of middle class or lower class people. Um, Cluster sampling, you divide your population into convenient clusters, like maybe a classroom or a neighborhood. Um, those are people that you can easily get to. As, and you can then randomly choose um, some of those clusters. You, um, it's not necessarily convenient. It's not the same thing as convenient sampling, because you're not only choosing people who are convenient. You're randomly choosing from some, some clusters. Um, systematic sampling, you start with one member chosen at random, and then you use a rule so you can choose some other members of the sample. Like you might be, do it based on social security number, but um, then every third number in social security number would be chosen. Um, these two are the biased ones. Convenient sampling would mean I only choose subjects who are easy to get to or easy to get a hold of. Um, and convenient sampling has a high risk of bias for that reason. Some um, in the 2020 ele election, the polls didn't seem very accurate, and some of that was that there was a convenience problem. Um, they say that Trump voters are particularly unwilling to answer poll questions. So since they only they couldn't get a hold of those um, those voters, they were they're represented more, um, less in polls. All right. Um, the self-selected sampling, you can use a sample of volunteers. You can say, hey, who wants to answer my survey? This also has a high risk of bias, kind of the same thing I was talking about with some voters are less willing to answer questions. And so when you say, are you willing to answer some questions, you are doing a little bit of self-selecting there. Um, all right, so we're going to think about which method this is. Starting with a randomly selected ID number, every fifth student ID number was chosen, what student, and that student was asked to fill out a survey. This is very systematic. They have a um, method, and they are using that method to ask their questions. Which method is this? A retailer puts feedback cards at the front of the store. They got responses from 22% of their customers. This is a voluntary thing. So this it would be um, an example of selecting. So the, the customers are um, selecting whether they want to answer the questions or not. I'm spelling that wrong, but you know what I mean. Self-selecting is the method here. Um, a city wants to know what percent of the people in the city own a dog. A worker goes door to door in the neighborhood near City Hall and asks people about their pets. They were only talking to people who were convenient. So this is convenient sampling. They were going in their own neighborhood and asking people. But there could be bias here because some people, there might be more or fewer pets in the neighborhood of City Hall. Um, a polling company groups people by age and then chooses a random sample from each group to ask about an upcoming election. Because they're grouping people and then choosing from each group, this is stratified sampling. Stratified sampling is different from cluster sampling because they didn't put them into convenient clusters. They, put the, they divided them by a convenient characteristic or by a common characteristic. Um, this last method, last question, to see how many nurses are vaccinated against polio, a number of hospitals were randomly chosen, and within each hospital, vaccine records of all the nurses in that hospital were studied. This is an example of cluster sampling because the hospitals are the convenient cluster. They randomly chose a convenient cluster to study. All right. So this is a moment for you to think about how you feel about sampling methods. There were six of them, so make sure you understand all six of those. And then in summary for this lesson, you should be able to identify the types of statistical studies, bias and how bias is introduced, and then the sampling methods. All right, see you tomorrow.